Hi, this is Owen from IB Blueprint, and today we'll be learning about how to draw a voltaic cell and how a voltaic cell works. So let's get started. A voltaic cell is simply a way of converting chemical energy into electrical energy through spontaneous reactions. Or in other words, a voltaic cell is a battery. So what does this battery look like? Well, there are two compartments, like this followed by a salt bridge that connects the two with two electrodes like this and then these two electrodes are connected by a voltmeter an easy way to remember this, V for voltmeter, V for voltaic cell and then these are all submerged in electrolyte solution like this. Now, we shall use a zinc copper voltaic cell. So, the first thing we've got to realize is that one of, one of these electrodes will be made out of zinc, one of these will be made out of copper. One will be positive and one will be negative. How do we know what's what? Well, this is the first step. We need to know which one is more reactive. Well, way to work it out is this. First method is you can memorize the reactivity series and know that zinc is higher up than copper. Or you can look at the data booklet, the standard electrode potentials, and see which one's higher up on the list, and that one is more reactive. Now, how do we use this information if we find out? Well, let's just say that zinc is the more reactive one, so copper is the less reactive. Less reactive. How can we use this piece of information? Well, it's easy. Remember this. Zinc is more reactive than copper. And here's nice and straightforward. The bitch gets reduced. The bitch being the one that is less reactive gets reduced. I don't mean reduced in size. I mean reduced in chemistry terms. What do, you, what do we mean by reduced? Well, let's remember oil rig. Oxidation is lost. Reduction is gained. So reduced means gain of electrons. So the copper gains electrons. How does that help us work out which one's which? Well, let's start with this. One of these electrodes is going to be negative, one of these is going to be positive. It doesn't matter which one's which because if you flip the voltaic cell, positive is going to be on the other side and negative is going to be on the other side. So let's say this side is negative and this side is positive. Well, how, what do we do next? Well, let's call one of these the cathode and let's call the other one the anode. The cathode is positive because cathode, cation, positive. The cation has a little T in it, looks like a little plus sign. Let's call that one the positive one. But this is only true for voltaic cells, remember, so don't get too confused. Now, um, the anode, anions, we can think of anions, negative charge, and overall, anode, negative, cathode, cathode positive. What next? So we know that the cathode's positive. All we need to know now is this little piece of information. Anox, red cat. What does that mean? Anode, oxidation, reduction, cathode. So oxidation occurs at the anode, reduction occurs at the cathode. Well, which one's the cathode? This one here. Which one gets reduced? The bitch. Which one's the bitch? Copper. So copper is at the cathode. And then by default, zinc is at the negative anode. So then, what do I mean by copper gets reduced? Well, re the reduction equation is this. Copper ions, being Cu2+, in its most common form, goes to copper solid. So what happens is this. Copper, the copper in this solution will be forming onto the copper anode, cathode. So, if you have Cu2+, here, it will attach itself onto the copper electrode. On the flip side, we have Zn2 plus on this side. And the Zn2 plus, it doesn't attach, it dissolves. So the Zn2 plus dissolves into the solution on this side. Okay, so that, there we have the two metals reacting with each other. Next, we have to have a way of moving the electrons through the voltmeter. Because if you don't have electrons through the wire, you don't have a charge. 
So, how does the electron flow work? Well, the easiest way to remember this is electron flow is alphabetical. So, anode to cathode, A to C, alphabetical. So, remember, the anion, negative 1 is the anode, goes this way. So, from anode to cathode, alphabetical order. Next step, I've left to last, is the salt bridge. How does the salt bridge work? Well, the salt bridge serves two purposes. First of all, to have a circuit, the circuit needs to be complete. So, to have a complete circuit, it's joined by a salt bridge. The next important part of the salt bridge is this. You'll see that electrons are leaving this half. Therefore, there's an absence of negative charge. Here, electrons are coming to this side, so there's an excess negative charge. Now, solutions can't be charged, so that's why we need a salt bridge in play. The salt bridge does two things. A, complete the circuit. Two, balance the charges. So, how do we do that with a salt bridge? Well, a salt bridge is usually made up of an aqueous salt. So, we might have K+, and then NO3- minus as the aqueous salt, so potassium ions and nitrate ions. So, with this, one of them is going to go to the cathode, one of them is going to go to the anode. Because negative charge is leaving, we need to replace the negative charge with the anion. And because the positive charge here is being affected by the negative charge, or there's an excess negative charge, we need the positive charge to move to this side here. If you don't like memorizing the chemistry, there's an easier way to remember it. Just remember, anions go to the anode, and cations go to the cathode. Anions, anode. Cations, cathode. So, that is how a voltaic cell works. I hope you found this video uh, informative, and I hope you enjoyed listening to it. Thank you.